All right, well, we're continuing with football on the Sportsmax Zone and we're chaining our attention now to the UEFA Champions League where a trip to the Wembley Stadium is at stake ahead of Tuesday's start of the second leg semi-final action. So Borussia Dortmund will travel to Paris Saint-Germain with a slim 1-0 lead courtesy of Nicolas Fulkrug, 35th minute strike in the first leg. Paris Saint-Germain will now hope that their superstar Kylian Mbappe can inspire them to come from behind in front of their home crowd. Well, Brent Sancho, he joins us on Zoom to look ahead to Tuesday's encounter. Welcome to the zone, Brent. I heard you're in Grenada. Yeah, that's where I am in uh, beautiful Grenada. Had a, an excellent weekend playing with some top, top legends uh, like Sir JJ Okocha, uh, Marina Ab Adabayo, uh, and some of the regional uh, legends as well. Shaka Hitzler, Russell Latipi, Stern John, uh, just to name a few, of course, Ricardo Gardner, uh, and Goodison as well. Fun weekend, back and muscles are aching a bit, but I'm fine. <laughs> oh my, how was that? Did you all play in teams, Brent, and whose team got the better of the other? Well, the game ended up in a tie, so I wouldn't say anyone got the better of the, the other, but... Uh, Who scored? Uh, it was certainly played. It was well, four piece, four each. Four each, and it went to penalty kicks. Uh, it was played in an electric walking piece, and not like electric sprinting piece, but uh, <laughs> uh, nevertheless, it was all fun. A uh, good turnout and an excellent job by the, the Green Football Association. I just have one more before we drop this. Who scored? Who were the goal scorers? <laughs> well... Uh, I, I had a chance to score and I didn't score, but uh, nevertheless, um, <laughs> I'm just happy that I came through the 70 minutes on skin. Uh, just a bit of soreness and that's it. Okay, all right, that's all right. We let you off because you're a defender, so it's fine. It's all right. Let's get to the Champions League action now because one man needs to score tomorrow if PSG is to walk away with anything or, of course, get that comeback win because they're trailing. Kylian Mbappe is the man I'm talking about and he hasn't scored against Dortmund in his last two matches. So, do you expect him, Brent, to take the opportunities when he gets them tomorrow on like you? Yeah, I do expect PSG to, to obviously try to play on the front foot and try to get him involved quite early. I think that the real uh, crux of the matter is, is finding ways of, of, of getting him and both, of course, the belly going uh, as it relates to that uh, front two, front three, and, and being able to explore their pace. Um, I think one of the, the challenges that PSG had in the Dortmund game, they just didn't get the ball to Mbappe in those areas where he excels in, in 1v1 situations where he can run at defenders and come inside. And that was not, uh, of course, uh, that was able to do over the extensive period of the game. And that's something they would have to try and do uh, coming into this fixture. Look, it's it's a game they know they have to win. Uh, they're coming back to, uh, of course, uh, Paris. But they will feel comfortable and confident that they can turn the things around. Uh, it must be said, Mariah, it's not necessarily a performance by Dortmund that blew PSG out of the park. Uh, and they would have had a huge mountain to climb. It's still very much... Uh, in such a distance for the men from Paris. And, and I'm very sure that Mbappe in particular will look at this tie as, as, a, as, as a game that is one step away from him playing in the finals and, and leaving PSG on a high. So I expect him to step things up. Uh, and, and from a team perspective, I said, they really need to find ways of getting the ball faster to him. Yeah, and Borussia Dortmund would come into this one, Brent, feeling a bit more confident, especially because of what they were able to do in the first leg, that goal from Nicholas Fulkrug, you know, he has really stepped up for this team. So they come into this one a bit confident. Are we expecting to see any sort of changes with this Borussia Dortmund squad? I do think one of the things I'm very sure that PSG should be looking at, Mariah, is the fact that Dortmund has struggled in the road. Uh, that, that's a, a known fact. They're a team that... Uh, throughout the Bundesliga and in this very Champions League, they've shown uh, tremendous grit, tremendous uh, fortitude when they play at home, of course, because of that very intimidating Dortmund Stadium and they've been able to do well there. Uh, but they're not the same team when they travel. Albeit, of course, they, they did put in uh, a, a fight and performance against Atletico Madrid in the, in the previous rounds. Uh, but that being said, it, 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 from a PSG perspective, there's not much excuses there because they, they've had the rest, of, of course, that the league art title has been sewn up uh, and they have uh, players that they believe that can help in getting a, a result. So from that perspective, you, you would have to say, yes, Dortmund is, is does, does struggle and I think that's what PSG would look at. And they, they have struggled uh, coming away from home. Uh, and as I said, it's it's not a game that they were far off from, um, especially 
uh, when you look at how uh, things played out in the first half in the, in the first leg um, things went a little bit different in the second half they have to be very mindful uh, of course of the wing play of Dortmund we saw that in particular Sancho he put, had an excellent game um, and, and I think looking into the next fixture coming up in, in Paris they would want to shut that down but again it comes back to what I said from the start of this broadcast it is extremely important for PSG to play on the front foot and take the game, uh, take the, the, the game by the, the, bull, the, the bull by the head, because they want to be the protagonist. They want to be the one that's obviously uh, pushing the tempo of the game and setting the tempo of the game. Yeah. Can you talk quickly, Brent, about the current form of Borussia Dortmund? I know their Bundesliga season hasn't been the best, but they weren't able to get the weekend off this past weekend. But with a heavily rotated squad, they hammered Augsburg by five goals to one. Uh, which tells me that they are probably high on confidence and their form isn't bad heading to Paris. Yeah, they're very high on confidence, but again, away from whom we've seen in this competition, they have struggled. And, uh, and Dortmund uh, certainly would look at this fixture as probably a, a fixture that they need to probably do things a bit different. Uh, they're not a team, Lance, that wants to, uh, to, to start with a low block. They're not a defensive-minded team. Uh, they're very they're at their best and they're at their most comfortable uh, when they are playing on the front foot, when they are they're given as good as they get. Uh, the question is, can they do that and then keep things secure at the back? And I think that's where my concern comes in. Um, we've seen them in games where, where it's a bit open and the game is a bit expansive uh, and they do struggle in transition. Uh, that being said, they had an excellent second half against PSG, but it really comes down to the way they, they approach things. I don't think defensively is the answer, but I think a, 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 an approach some way in between where, of course, they're very mindful of, of, of not allowing PSG to utilize their pace, but at the same time, utilize their wingers the best way for them. And, and goes back to the fact that the former way from home has to change and it probably comes up with the proper mindset and the proper tactical approach. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Brent, that this team is as good as the 2013 team that Jurgen Klopp uh, took to the final and lost to, to Bayern Munich? I don't think so. I, I do think that uh, this team does have its flaws, and, and we've seen it in, in, in patches in the Champions League. Uh, the team that Jurgen Klopp uh, played with, you, you pretty pretty much knew how they played both home and away. Uh, and you pretty much knew what you would get every single time. They were a lot more consistent in their approach. Uh, I think this Dortmund team has shown uh, that they can fluctuate in their levels. Uh, and that is a concern. Can they now keep the same levels that they showed in Germany uh, and take it into Paris? Um, and, and if history in this competition this year is to be our guide, I'd suggest that that would be probably one of their challenges. Again, I go back to the fact that they did do quite well against Atletico Madrid and it was surprising for them to come out uh, with the result. But can they consistently do it well? And I think that's the difference in the two teams. Yeah. Can you talk to us about the ineffectiveness of uh, Kylian Mbappe in the first leg and uh, if that in any small measure is due to... Um, what Borussia Dortmund offered strategically or tactically against him and uh, what might be different in the second leg? Yeah, one of the problems I've always had with, with Mbappe is, is that once he's crowded out, once he, he has to face two or three opponents, once he's, he's denied the space in behind, once he's not allowed to run uh, with pace with the football, his game tends to fluctuate, tends to not be at the high levels that you expect from him. So right away, they would have to find, they being PSG, they would have to find ways of using quick cross field balls and trying to switch the point here attack to get him in isolated situations. If you look at what has transpired with Mbappe, both in a Barcelona tie, uh, where he was very, very quiet, and, and again in, in Dortmund, teams recognized that and they were able to find two or three players to make sure that there was cover and that there was help when it comes to him. And I'm very sure Dortmund would do the same again. So for, it is for both. Of course, the PSG team to find ways of get him in isolated situations and killing Mbappe to now look at avenues of where he can do teams, play in pockets, try to find uh, the space and be clever with where he wants to pick the ball up. And that's the side of the game that I think he has not completely crystallized yet, is being able to, to be impactful for long periods. And, and that comes with finding and, and understanding where you need to be in the pitch to receive the football, to then start to watch your opponent. Yeah, for a moment, if you can, Brent, could you put your 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 mind into Kylian Mbappe's body and tell me if you feel that he feels stressed and pressured going into this fixture? Because he's on his way out of PSG, so 
from a commitment standpoint, you might feel as if he, you know, mentally would have checked out of PSG already? Or is it that um, he is feeling stressed because he would like to leave on a high note? I, I think, Lance, he, he would be feeling motivated because when you look at the fact that he really is one football game away uh, from making a Champions League final, and we will all agree that in a, in a one-off football match, any number can play. Uh, but it, it, coming into this fixture where he has a genuine chance to leave PSG in a high, I'm very sure... Mbappe and, and everyone in and around him would want to leave Paris uh, giving that uh, elusive trophy that they've been after for quite a number of years. So I just feel that there's something within him that would be very, very motivated to go out there and put in a performance. Um, and so that's why I think that uh, he will do well tomorrow. I, I, I do think that, well, in the fixture, I think he will do very well because I just feel that he's looking at it as it's not far away. It's very attainable. It's very right there. Uh, it's very much a situation that he can do well in. Um, so I just see him as being motivated more than stressed or, or feeling that uh, he's under a lot of pressure. Yeah, and we're going to wrap now, Brent, but I, I've got to get a prediction from you. Um, who would your bet be? I am sticking my nose out for PSG in this one. I, I just feel that they'll win it. Um, uh, probably a 2-1 scoreline. Um, and uh, uh, I think they will advance nevertheless. Okay, Brent. Thanks, man, and uh, enjoy the rest of Grenada. Not sure how much time you have left there, but we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. <laughs> I will enjoy. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Okay, and we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone on the other side of the break.